Get married to Bill, you're living in work. Was Jackson even a conversation? No, no. Uh, I didn't hear of Jackson at all, except that we had a great friend of Bill's parents who had a restaurant in Spring Creek, just near the Jackson homestead. You could, you know, uh, shoot a gun from, from the uh, deer head to uh, the Jackson farm. But anyway, um, we spent a lot of time down there, and of course they knew the Jackson family because they'd be in and out of the restaurant, and uh, we knew the Jackson homestead. And of course when Bill became a lawyer, he did a lot of real estate law and, and uh, knew the land and knew who lived in all these various places. Uh, so he knew about Jackson, um, but I didn't know anything about Jackson. Uh, and at this point, I had uh, finished my master's degree before my marriage, and, and I majored in 20th century British history. I was very influenced by the year I spent in England studying at the London School of Economics. And, and uh, my, I had two majors, political science. The real name of London School of Economics is London School of Economics and Political Science. It's in, over the door. And I took the poli-sci, but I also took some history courses there. Um, and at the University of London, where I had world-class history courses. So um, very uh, much into British history and, of course, my mother's traditions. She has relatives who still have law cases in chancery against Henry VIII trying to get their lands back and stuff. It's hysterical. They, they keep them going just for the history of it. You know, the British never forget anything. So that, you know, I had all that family lore going along as well. So very inspired by that and by European history, which really is my area. And I loved architectural history. So Jackson was really not on my radar screen. And it was when the Jackson Center started, and I was very interested in it. And at that point, I was um, going to retire from my job because I had had a first grandchild, and my mother was getting elderly, and dad had died. So. Um, I had other fish to fry besides teaching. I didn't totally give it up. I uh, would get, do a course as an adjunct for um, JCC, Jamestown Community College, now a branch of SUNY, and also at, ja at Chautauqua Institution. So um, kind of drawn into the Jamestown world and the New York State world through those things. And then the Jackson Center was invented by our wonderful friends, uh, including Greg Peterson, who really was the, the inspiration for it because he values history so much as well and is a lawyer himself. I don't know a lawyer who isn't inspired by Jackson. Most lawyers know about him. Certainly his wonderful, uh, his wonderful law review article about Warren County and the uh, Cobham Castle, part of the local lore down there, made him famous in law schools throughout the country. It was widely read. And I think uh, so charming that it made every people, everybody interested in him for that reason alone. So, and of course his work with Nuremberg trial what was well known and, and I knew his name as the prosecutor but really didn't know he was from Warren at all. He wasn't living in Warren and just never, uh, never knew it. But there were a lot of my friends whose parents knew him and hung around with him he had a wide circle of friends. His best friend was the founder of the Blair Company in Warren, which was a national company, and, um, and we knew all the Blairs. So, uh, you know, it didn't come up so much in conversation, but, uh, you know, once if you mention Jackson to them, they're like, oh yes, and they all had family stories, because Jackson was such a fun guy. Uh, I can't believe how some of the books, you know, just depict him as, as this kind of dour guy. Why do you think Franklin Roosevelt liked him so well and liked to have him over for his poker parties and seek his advice about things? He just had a way with him uh, and was very helpful to everybody. Uh, I remember, I think it was maybe the first or second time that um, that Greg brought the, the Jackson Center down to the Warren courtroom for a Jackson birthday party, because he was born in um, Warren County. Um, and a woman 
approached us and asked if she could talk to Greg and she had a letter that had been written by Jackson when she was in high school. He was corresponding with this little high school kid who was writing a paper for class and had, had uh, approached him and he just took the time. You know, this is the kind of person he was. And just the more you knew about him, the more you wanted to know about him. So I found a happy home at the Jackson Center, that's for sure. First, I was just a volunteer uh, and um, also, you know, wanted a lot to introduce the people in my home county in Warren to Jackson and taught my students about him and everything else and uh, brought them to the Jackson Center. The day of my um, oldest daughter's marriage, a lot of my family came from Europe and my favorite cousin over there has a husband who has a law practice in Wales and uh, he was a huge fan of Robert Jackson and had done his thesis uh, on Robert Jackson. And he was coming for the wedding the day that Rehnquist was at the Jackson Center. And so while we were having a bridesmaid's luncheon, Frank was up standing in the rain. He's a Brit and he didn't mind that rain a bit. And so he was standing in the rain listening to Rehnquist speak. It was one of the highlights of his life uh, because he had been, you know, the centerpiece of his thing. So that just made it um, that much more interesting to me that he would be so well known that Frank Ranson took his interest. And Frank Ranson has Lloyd George's law firm mm -hmm. in the north of Wales. So he's a big deal up there. And uh, I was pretty impressed that he was, that, that was his inspiration for his entire life's practice, which had been so successful for him. And I met him first when he was just a little college boy at the University of Manchester. So, so you, you were a board member, you've been an officer, you've been a volunteer, you've organized uh, terrifically events in, in Warren, uh, you've done much to uh, bring Jackson alive and well into your county uh, through books, the Gail Gerald books have been distributed to high school students, uh, the annual Jackson lecture you've encouraged and supported you I mean you've been the chairperson of those events yeah. and we're now at I don't know, 12 13 14 yeah. of them and uh, you really have taken it up a terrific notch as far as just the uh, consciousness level in Warren County of your native guy one of the proudest things is that we've had some teacher interns some of my fellow teachers from Warren have gotten the bug and now I hope they'll carry the torch. Um, and they are bringing it into their classrooms and incorporated it into all of their, their, their whole seminars and everything. And I work for College Board, uh, so I have a chance to influence um, the publishers of textbooks and uh, professors. And increasingly, some of the great, there are textbooks out now that don't include Abraham Lincoln. Uh, it's very frightening. And uh, I want them to continue to tell the story of the Nuremberg trial. Um, what has been really delightful is that the German nation has um, resurrected its interest in the Nuremberg trial. For a lot of years, that was a, a bitter pill for them to swallow and they tended to de-emphasize it because many of them had friends and relatives. All of them had friends and relatives who died in that war. Uh, Germany was very badly hurt by World War II and they uh, wanted to move on uh, to a new day. But now they have the wisdom. Uh, the Germans have always celebrated their past. You, you know, if you go there, you can see a building, they'll say this was built in 900 and it's still fresh paint, you know, because they keep it up, they don't tear it down. Um, so they are now really, really celebrating us and celebrating Robert Jackson. They have a little museum right in the courthouse in Nuremberg dedicated to our Robert Jackson, a museum. So not so shabby. 
Well, I can. Uh, I have many pictures of one Peggy Morgan, whether it's in Washington, New York City, Nuremberg. Uh, you were uh, a, a road warrior for the good of the Jackson cause, and that's a memory I have of you among many. But uh, <laughs> you, you were you were good good sport, a good board member on all of those fronts. Oh, I sought out the, the representative from the London School of Economics, and we had a great chat. <laughs> that was, you know, all of this is important, it's serious, but I can't tell you how much fun it is as well. The wonderful people that you meet, people who have all the right ideals and all the best ideas, it's been a real highlight of my life. You've had a chance to meet some of those people who've been part of our orbit for the, whether it's the the Barrett Prettymans, the Whitney Harris's, and people like that. There yeah. were a couple of those sort of ones that stood out, and you say, oh. I'll never forget the time I met so and so. Oh, gosh. There isn't anybody on the board who wasn't really a great person. And the more you know them, the greater they are. Uh, Greg Peterson is a life force, and everyone in the entire region knows about him and knows him. Uh, if he, if you're lucky enough to be in his world, you're lucky indeed because he walks the walk, he talks the talk, and he follows through with everything he dabbles with. Um, the Jackson Center would not be what it is today. People like Raleigh Kidder, who took an interest in history in a very big way, um, you know, wrote these charming books about World War II, was instrumental in the World War II. Um, monument down in Washington DC these are people who really spread their wings uh, far and you know I think about my own family coming from you know beautiful beautiful area in the west of Ireland I, I came back and I said dad how'd you ever leave and he said I was destined to leave there are some people who just have to go he was the, that's how I got the fourth son story I said, how did you ever leave? And he said, well, you know, it was that or to have to get a job over there. And there weren't so many. So, uh, so his, his uh, alternative was to come over here where he had family already. So yes, um, I, I think that it's been first and foremost the people who work for the Jackson Center, the board members, um, the people who've taken on the roles of running the place and, uh, and keeping it ticking the benefactors who actually put their money on the line for something that they think the world should know about. Uh, I can't tell you how wonderful they are and they all have special reasons for doing so. Um, it's been fascinating to find out those reasons and to, to realize the depth that people that you just know socially really have. Uh, and, and a group like this you do find out those things about each other. And then there are the people who just have national prominence. A Barrett Prettyman is another one of them. Um, just to think how remarkable his life was. Uh, his, his fa he came from an illustrious family. His father has a federal courthouse named after him down in D.C. and he was a, an insider with the Kennedy family. He was at Hickory Hill, Robert Jackson's home at that time lived in by Robert Kennedy. Uh, he was there the night that Robert Kennedy was assassinated and had to break the news to the children. Um, stories like this really go right to your bone and um, the fact that he found it important to be on our board in Warren and Jamestown and spend time there. Uh, when he came to Warren for an event we had for a debut of the uh, documentary movie of Jackson, uh, we had an event at the Blair Corporation and I was able to give him the copies of the original correspondence between his father and Robert Jackson. Uh, they were friends as well as colleagues down in Washington. So Prettyman was just carrying this forward into the next generation and didn't even know it. He didn't know about that correspondence. I felt very proud to be able to share that with him. So uh, yeah, it's, it's not, a, not a really big world after all. 
it really isn't but amazing people we had at the at the uh, at the center we had the judge who tried Saddam Hussein think of that unbelievable so just just can't even imagine um, how important it is that this is carried on and that the kids are finding out about it and that they also realize there's an opportunity for them in this. Uh, one of our good friends is a, a judge in Pennsylvania in a really tiny town um, and he, would, he was invited to give the speech at graduation and he could have talked about his own life. He'd done the Sandusky trial and all these big important things and he'd been a, a, a member of the, of the Supreme Court in Pennsylvania. And that, that's not like a Supreme Court in New York State. It's, it's a really a Supreme Court. It's the top court. And, um, and he talked about Robert Jackson because he wanted to impress on those kids that you could come from a small town and amount to something. You could come from the middle of 98 acres and meet all these people. This is great, Peggy. This is fantastic. Thank you.